The Bose Noise Cancelling 700 headphones. They're one of the best noise cancelling headphones on the market, but there's some things that I wish I would have known before I got these. Let's get into it. Hey everyone, my name is Chris, and in this video, I wanted to talk about my experience with the Bose Noise Cancelling 700 headphones. Specifically, I just wanted to cover some of the things I wish I would have known before getting these headphones. So, uh, before I got the headphones at all, I was using the Bose QC35s. Um, awesome pair of headphones. I really liked them. They were very comfortable, uh, but they weren't mine. They're my wife's. And since we're both working from home, we were always shifting the headphones back and forth. So I just thought it'd be a good idea for me to get my own set of headphones. Um, so my wife got those. Uh, I was able to get these as a gift uh, from her parents. So thank you. So I did a lot of research on these headphones. I uh, watched a ton of videos, tons of reviews, and I was considering three options. These, the Sony's uh, product name here, version 3, and the Surface Headphones 2. Now, I ended up going with these based on the reviews because they checked all of the boxes that I had for noise-canceling headphones. So, my primary use for these is for work. So, uh, like I said, my wife and I are working from home. Most of the time we're in the same room in our home office, but sometimes I'm in the living room or she's in the bedroom and we're just at separate places. Um, so I wanted something with good active noise cancellation. I want to be able to tune everything out and just focus on what I'm trying to do. So from a noise cancellation perspective, these are pretty darn good. The next important thing for me was microphone quality. And something that was consistent across all of the reviews that I saw was if this is something that you plan on using for calls, then the Bose have the best mic sound quality. And so far I haven't had any issues with it. People haven't noticed that I switched from one headphone to another or that I sound different. So um, I really like that I'm able to take all of my calls throughout the day. And um, yeah, my quality has been really great. So this is what the audio sounds like coming out of the Bose QC35 version two. Uh, this is something that I used a lot. I use these he headphones to join calls at work and talk on the phone throughout the, throughout the day. So uh, this is what it sounds like. It's not that bad. Uh, not as great as something like the AirPods, but of course, because of that battery life issue, like these are the phones, the headphones that I was using throughout the day just because they lasted me throughout the day. So now let's switch. And this is what the audio sounds like coming out of the Bose... 700 noise canceling headphones. Um, so you might see a slight improvement on the mic quality compared to the older version, um, but it's good enough to get me throughout a day full of phone calls and video calls and things like that. So um, this is one of the main reasons that I went for these. Um, if these are ever dead or not charging, like I'll go ahead and use my AirPods for 30 minutes or 45 or whatever they last me. But whenever that call is over or these are charged enough, then I just automatically switch back to these. So let me know what you think of the difference down below. If it's super noticeable, not noticeable at all, um, let me know. The next thing is battery life. So these have quite the battery life compared to what I was using before. So if I wasn't using the Bose, my primary headphone set were my AirPods. And I got my AirPods around a year and a half, two years ago. And those were just not cutting it anymore for working at home. Uh, they would die consistently. If I had calls that were an hour or more, uh, they would consistently die on the calls, uh, which it just, I had to fumble, find wired headphones, charge one AirPod at a time. It just became unnecessary. So battery life on these is great. Whenever I charge it to full battery, it says 13 hours of battery life. I typically just have them on all the time and I'm able to get through an entire day without having to recharge, which is a win for me. The next thing I wanted was multi-device support. So I use these primarily with my iPad and my iPhone, um, but I also have my Mac that I use to edit these videos on, so I like to be able to connect to that. And uh, I also have a Pixel, which sometimes I use that to watch videos or listen to music or podcasts, so I like to connect to that. Um, so I like being able to connect to multiple devices. Um, the Sony's didn't have that feature on the version 3. They recently came out with the version 4, but they're not out yet, so I'm kind of out of luck on that one. And uh, I don't really recall if that was available on the Surface headphones, um, 
but I at the end I wasn't considering them anyway just because of the call quality and the things that I had read about the noise cancellation on them so it was either between these and the Sony's and these went out okay so now let's talk about some of the things that I wish I would have known which is the purpose of this video so the first thing is comfort so these are comfortable headphones I'm not there they have the spongy cushions here I mean they feel good when you're wearing them they don't feel like you're wearing a big old set of headphones. They fit snug, they just feel comfortable. Um, but one thing I noticed whenever I compared these to the QC35s that I was using before is that these are a little bit stiffer. Um, I'm not sure if it's just because I've only had them for a few weeks and haven't broken them in yet. Um, if you look at what my wife's QC35s look like, they're kind of worn out, but even though they look worn out, they still feel a little bit more comfortable than this. Uh, that's not to say that these are uncomfortable. They're comfortable by any means, but when comparing them to what I was using before, I would take the other ones on comfort alone. So fit, um, these are adjustable by moving this little thing up and down, uh, which is different because the like QC35s, the adjustment was at the, the head portion here. I'm not very technical about headphones, so I can't really figure out what these are called off the top of my head, but the adjustment was made here. But on these, the adjustment is made here. So the fit, um, they fit well. Sometimes I feel like they fit a little loose and that might just be because of the shape of my head or maybe it's my fault, but they do feel kind of loose. So if I'm sitting and if I move my head or if I like bend down to pick something up from the floor or feed my cat, like I can feel the headphones kind of almost falling off and I'm not sure how I feel about that. Um, but I just have to be more conscious about whenever I'm moving my head or bending over or things like that. There are buttons on here, but most of the functions or things that you do uh, require a swipe, which is a good and a bad thing. So the thing here, since there's no buttons, you do everything using swipes. So if you tap twice, it'll play or pause whatever you're listening to. If you swipe to the right, it'll move forward, and if you swipe to the back, it'll move backward. Pretty intuitive. But I haven't figured out a way to get this done the first time. Like if I ever wanna to swipe to the right to either fast forward or skip track, um, I always miss the mark, and I have to do it multiple times, and sometimes that means I, I skip forward too much, or I skip forward, or I go backwards too much. Uh, it's not as easy as it sounds. Maybe it'll take me some time just to get used to it and learn that muscle memory to like swipe, but uh, I've been having some some issues with it. And like I said, that's probably my fault because I haven't uh, used that a lot. I've only had these for about a week and a half now, but something to consider. It takes some practice figuring out where to tap, where to swipe, things like that. The volume is one thing that, I don't know. I thought I would like to swipe, but I don't. Um, the QC35s had the physical buttons that let you adjust the volume. Here you have to swipe up and down to adjust the volume, uh, which is convenient. You don't have those buttons there, but you have to, you have to keep swiping and figure out where you want to go. And I don't know, it feels like some extra steps. Like if I want to go down three clicks, I go down three clicks. And if I want to go down three clicks here, I kind of have to like swipe down and then it goes over two mites and then I have to swipe back up to figure out where I wanted to go. It's just a few extra steps. Like I said, that kind of comes down to personal convenience, but just something I wish I would have known. It's not as seamless as I thought it would be. And lastly, the thing that's bugging me the most right now is because there's no buttons and because these things are touched, Whenever I put my headphones on, I typically put them on like this, but they tend to flip out like this. And that means as I'm walking, um, my collarbone or my shoulder or something will touch the right side of the cup here that controls the volume, play pause, fast forward. So I'll be walking around and then like my music or my podcast starts playing or I'll take them off, sit them down and I'll hear this faint noise on the other side of the table and it turns out that my podcast has been playing uh, since I took my headphones off. Again, I don't know if that's just me, but it's something that I wish I would have known. It's super sensitive. The very slightest touch can 
uh, interact with the button or the cup and start messing with your audio. So that's something I wish I would have known before. One thing that really irks me, yes, these do have multi-device support, but how do you change devices? That's something that wasn't clear to me. On the QC35s, you could take the power button and just flick it to the right to alternate between the connected devices. That's not an option here. You don't have the ability on the headphone itself to switch to a new device. If you press the Bluetooth button, which is also the power button, the headphones turn off. So that's not an option. Um, what things that I have noticed is that whenever I turn them on, um, the first device that I play anything from, those are the devices where the audio will come from. But if I have two devices and I'm listening to audio on one device, if I stop what I'm playing there and play it on another device, uh, the audio doesn't start playing on the headphones automatically. I'm not sure if that's what's expected or if that's what's supposed to happen, but that's not what's been happening for me. Uh, the only option that I do have is having to download another app. So it's not the old Bose app that you would use for the QC35s, it's a different app. So another thing I wish I would have known, I have to download a different app for these headphones and that'll tell me like which devices I'm paired to. And even though it gives me the option to switch the audio from one device to another, it doesn't always work. If I tap one of the devices, it just gives me a little spinning circle and nothing ever actually happens. So the best luck that I have from switching from device to device is actually turning the headphones off, turning them back on, and then playing the media from the device that I want to listen to, which is just a really hacky workaround. Ideally, we would have like a button that we could press or maybe like three taps on the right cup to alternate between devices, um, but that's not available yet. And that's one of the things that got me whenever I uh, got these headphones was I saw multi-device support checkbox, uh, but I didn't really look into how that actually worked whenever I was using the headphones. So if that's something that you're looking for, definitely something to keep in mind. And at this point now, it kind of sounds like I'm ranting about the headphones. Don't get me wrong. These headphones are amazing. Um, I don't have any, any complaints about the quality of the headphones. Music sounds great. Calls sound great. Um, I can wear these all day and I won't have any issues with it. They're comfortable. Like I really, really, really like these headphones. Uh, but the things that I mentioned are just things that I wish I would have known uh, because if I had known that, maybe I would have waited another week or two uh, for the Sony MX4s to be announced so that I could watch those reviews. And by the time those came out, I would have been able to make a more informed decision based on what's available at that time. So if you're in the market for noise canceling headphones, either for your work from home setup or you just, you're looking for a new pair, uh, my advice to you is don't just look at the specs, actually look at um, the features and how those features work. Um, if multi-device support is important to you, learn how you switch from device to device because maybe you have to download a separate app and do it that way and that might just not be uh, something that you you want to incorporate into your workflow and also if you're willing to or you're not in a hurry to make a purchase like this because these aren't cheap they're pretty expensive uh, maybe wait a few weeks and see what the new Sony's product name here version 4 look like but yeah that's all I got for these headphones. If you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell if you wanna get notifications whenever I post new videos. Um, follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I'm trying to be more active on those so I can engage with y'all and see the, what kind of content y'all wanna see from me. Um, but yeah, otherwise I will catch you in the next video. See ya.